Boom. There we go. What's up, Josiah? Thank you for coming on the podcast. Oh man, my pleasure, dude. Thanks for having me. So I got two questions. I just did one recently with David Burke. He's a networker. So he had all these questions that he likes to start things with. <laughs> and I was like, now I got to like start throwing these out. So number one, what's your favorite superhero? Batman. Batman? He's- nice. Yeah. Because the <laughs> humanistic element, the coming out and like he just feels like he has to take uh, on the city type thing. Yeah, I just like someone who can do both, right? Uh, so he has, you know, the the successful personal life, and then mm. he's also a you know badass. I I, I like Batman actually. I um, I like Batman since I was a kid, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then when they made the uh, Christopher Nolan when he made three, those three, oh man, like just yeah. my my fandom to a whole new level. Totally, yeah. I I love Batman. I'm like I kind of I see parallels in Captain America from Batman they're both like we just have to go do this true I'm more of the Captain America guy where I'm like I don't know he just seen it's just so much more peaceful it's like you know like Metropolis versus uh Arkham City they're both <laughs> supposed to be like New York one's during the day one's during the night and so you get to see those parallels um, so you already you already informed me just by what you just said that you have way more knowledge about comics than I do oh, <laughs> it's I'm not like the ultimate newbie I just like the characters I just love the uh, the uh, synchronicity when you're like, oh my god, that lines up with this, and then it's like this whole thing. And I was like, you you know, you think you figured it out. Little do you know, like Stan Lee's been like put, putting all these things together. The brothers who created DC have been putting that all together forever. That's dope. I'm, I might have to get into it when my kids are a little older and we can do it together. You know? Yeah, dude. I was just beware with the YouTube video funnel like sinkholes for kids mm. i'm uh i'm investigating some of the like uh the algorithm and stuff like that right now and youtube has all these kids videos right but they're interspliced with either like dark things like there's violence and stuff and you would never notice it mm. or there's like they're computer generated so bots now can create videos wow. based on like keywords and stuff and there's like all these really dark kids videos but like parents wouldn't know because the keyword, like the title's like, Jim goes on a fun day tonight <laughs> in the stand. And it's yeah. like people getting buried alive and stuff. Like oh. it's really weird subliminal messaging for oh, these kids. I just yeah. read this huge medium article. I like literally one second ago just got sucked in there. And it's like, watch this video. Watch this video. Yeah, we we uh we let our kids, you know, or initially we let them watch YouTube. Um, and then we realized that there were some like, I wouldn't say like that level of darkness, yeah. but um, some weird stuff, like just weird, you know? Weird. Uh, and so we cut it off. Like they're not allowed to watch regular YouTube anymore. They have to watch YouTube kids. And mm-hmm. I'm always like, they don't watch it that much, but like when they do, I'm always checking in, like listening, mm-hmm. seeing what's going on. Cause I'm just like, yeah, it's weird. It, it is. There's some sick people out there, man. That's the we, truth. We live in this weird technological age. But so, okay, speaking of family, is that one of the reasons that got you started into fitness and, and going on this journey that you've been on? And it, you know, the motivation to where you are now? Yes, but not for reasons you might think. So it was more because of the family I was born into, not the one I have now. Okay. Um, and some turmoil that happened uh, as a young kid. Um, being uh, part of a violent, abusive environment uh, drove me to want to get physically stronger because Mm -hmm. I always felt like (sighs) I wasn't good enough in comparison to a lot of my peers. And I felt weak. I felt small. Um, So I actually joined the gym originally not to lose fat. Um, I was just trying to get big. I was trying to get really muscular um, to defend myself and to feel better about myself. Uh, because of my family environment and because of the emotional turmoil that was going on at home, um, the gym was an escape for me uh, initially. So that's what got me into it uh, for sure. Yeah. So definitely family related. Man. Yeah, that is awesome, man. So, and now I just saw you're doing a fit dad's mastermind soon. Mm. Uh, you've got a lot going on and I know you do talk about your family a lot. Um, and it seems with how much you're doing, there's this huge balance. How do you balance life, family? I remember you were talking to Carter one time and he was saying some random stuff and you're like, dude, what do you think that raising kids is like? But there's this, this interesting balance of um, getting fit, having a family, having a business and then where you go with that. 
what uh what would you what typically yeah i said there was a little bit of interruption what do you normally think about with uh balancing all of this and raising awesome kids so um i don't believe in balance at all um i think that balance is a myth right i mean mm-hmm. If we're trying to be balanced, like we're never going to really get anything done. So I don't try to dictate equal levels of energy to all the things that I find important in my life. I try to be present when things are important. Uh, and oftentimes, I mean, if you look at like a, a pie graph or a pie chart of my time that I spend, I mean, it's really on two things, right? Um, it's on my business and it's on my family. Now, sure, um, you could throw in me time, right? Mm-hmm. Working out. Uh, but those, I mean, working out and being in physical shape, I mean, that could both be for my family and for my business, yeah. right? Yeah. But as far as like balancing time, um, I, don't, I don't believe in like, okay, I have to spend, you know, X amount of hours doing this and then X amount of hours doing that to equal it out. Um, but how do I get things done? I mean, the biggest tip or the biggest thing that I do is, is I plan it out, right? Like I actually write it down old school. Uh, just making sure that I know going into the next day or the next week what I have to accomplish. But I also know that based off experience and falling on my face and failing quite a bit, that if I try to do it all, like I'm definitely never going to get anything done. So I make priorities, right? And then I also give myself rules. Now, these rules are not deter, you know, they're not there to make my life harder or to make my life boring or whatever. They're there to give me peace of mind that if I follow these rules then things are going to play out in my favor. Um, So one of the rules, like for example, is that at five o'clock, you know, unless it's a big priority, unless it's like, you know, going to affect the family in a big way. um, I don't do any business stuff from five until eight o'clock when my kids go to sleep. You know, there might be the occasional checking social media or, whatever, but I don't do anything that requires a lot of my attention. My attention is on making sure my kids are okay, making sure that uh, I'm taking a break, you know, from work and spending time with my family. And then sure, there are days like most Sundays, I don't do a lot of work at all. Um, I just do family stuff, Uh, maybe go to the gym in the morning and then the rest of the day is just family focused. So, you know, at the end of the day though, it's, it just comes down to planning, having rules for yourself, Uh, And making sure that you attack the things that are most important based off the goals that you have. I think that in itself is probably the simplest way I can explain it. Awesome. No, that is awesome. I love that. There is no such thing as balance. Boom. (laughs) Yeah, true. Seriously. And I mean, I think about this a lot as well. It's, um, It's the notion of like a lot of people want like this time and then this time or like these things that they're trying to separate and they're trying to be like, I'm going to try to work now so I can optimize for this later. And a lot of times what ends up happening is like one, you're not fully in this because you're just thinking about this other thing. But two, like you don't realize like the time you have is this time. You don't have any other time. And so you need to execute, be who you are and like be fulfilled, live your life now. So yeah, fuck balance. That's yeah, I don't, I don't, it's like retirement, right? I don't believe in retirement. No. I, I mean, I think that you actually, if you want to bring more peace into your life, um, do away with the notion of retirement, right? And not working and like, oh, I'm just going to work my ass off now so that I don't have to later. Um, I look at things, a buddy of mine, Sal Stefano from my pump told me one time that whenever things are like crazy in his world and in business, like he asked himself, you know, could I see myself living right now this way for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then you got to change some stuff, right? Because at the end of the day, like, you know, Hey, there is no guarantee, right? Um, time is, it is what it is. It's quick. Uh, it goes by really fast. Uh, and I don't like to think about like, Oh, let me just, you know, ignore what's important to me right Mm -hmm. now so that later on I can enjoy it. Like, nah, man, like I just, I obviously have responsibilities and I have to put food on the table, but you know, Hey, tomorrow, if you said, Hey, like fitness business is done, um, you know, like what what are you going to do? I I mean, I would just go work somewhere. Right. And that's like the worst case scenario. So, um, but the the reason I say that is because for me, what prioritizes in my life is family, right? Number one, making sure they're taken care of financially, you know, emotionally loving all that stuff. Um, and the way I do that is right now with fitness and, and doing what I love. But at the same time, um, I don't do it because I'm trying to, 
you know, put, invest a lot of work and effort so that I can have more later. It's just because I, it's what I do, right? It's yeah. what I do right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that a lot of people, when they think about balance and they think about like all these things they got to do, it's like, dude, just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're and not assuming that so many things are going to happen down the road. It's just about now be present. Right. Totally. Yeah. And that's even like you were saying, time goes by so quick and it, it goes by quicker if you're doing the things you don't like, or you're waiting for the future, because like experiential time only stays in uh, like when you talk to someone who's old and they're like, yeah, I had such a great life. The people who say that are the ones who had all these memories and all these experiences. And the only way that your mind actually holds experiential time. And so experiences itself is through new and unique things is through spending time with those you love, things like that. So when we're trying to like optimize for, when we're 65 and then now we get to travel the world, but the knees don't feel too good. Then that's the point that like, you know, your life's got to go by way too quick and you're going to be like, shit, how did I get here? What the hell is going on? Yeah. Like I hate everything. So that, <laughs> I mean, you see that, you see it all the time. The like self helplessness. It's huge in our society nowadays. I, I mean, when you're working with clients, what's like the number one thing that you would say that typically contributes to them not seeing results? self-belief right and lack thereof i would say that's probably the number one thing not not believing in the work right not believing mm -hmm. that hey you know i actually can do this um and you know that that coupled with an inherent um I'm trying to think of the word uh almost like they're most people whether they realize it or not mm -hmm. um they're uh, my, my brain's not yeah. working, <laughs> you're good, you're good, man. but they're, they're, they almost feel like, um, uh, they deserve certain things without yes. doing the effort. Right. Um, and why I can't think of the word, I don't know, but oh. it'll come back to me at a random point in the podcast here. But yeah, so it's like a lack of self-belief, right. And people who are, you know, just kind of wrapped up in their own world, right. They, they kind of think that things are, are, are centered around them. Now, this is not necessarily like conscious thoughts that they have. Um, some people sure maybe, but a lot of people just without realizing have developed this habit of thinking that everything should just be handed to them. Right. And the reason why they don't have it is because they just weren't lucky or they just, you know, they had bad luck. Um, and there are other people who somehow found the secret. Right. And it's just, Oh man, I des I deserve that too, right? I deserve to have that. Um, coupled with this whole notion of like deep down inside, they don't really think that they can get to where they really want to be because they've tried things in the past, they've failed miserably, um, but they also just haven't given it enough time, right? They haven't um, done things like invest in themselves. They haven't done things like hire help. Um, I, you know, I talk, I've talked to man so many people now right. over the course of the past. Man, I've been doing some kind of fitness training for going on 13 years. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so it's like, I've talked to many, many people and the ones who succeed at life or fitness or anything, um, they have a strong sense of self-belief. They know that if they do the work, then they're going to get results. Now, maybe they haven't done the work their whole life, but they come to a point where they go, my pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Right. Yes. And, I don't deserve anything that I haven't worked for. So it's time to put in the work. And I know that if I put in that work, I'm going to get better results, whether it's the ultimate result or not. So I'm going to get better results time and time again. Like when I meet someone, um, now this isn't to say that people can't develop this, mm -hmm. right? This is just, it depends on where you are. So the people who I find succeed uh, have that. And the people who I find um, you know, who are flaky, who, um, don't commit, um, who never get the result they want. Um, they have this strong, like self pity is almost the right word, mm. right? Where yeah. it's like, Oh, woe is me. Um, you know, I've, I've been dealt bad hands. Um, and sure, like, like I said, this is not, I mean, I've, I was dealt a pretty poor hand. Um, yeah. we've been dealt poor hands. And so, you know, the thing to remember whenever you're trying to make a change in life, and this is like a, a big thing that I see is that life is going to throw different things at you, whether you're successful or not. You're always going to have a roller coaster effect in life where there's going to be good days and bad days and good weeks and bad weeks. The point of it all is that 
you need to enjoy the damn ride and you need to keep going and, and keep going back and getting on and actually giving it a shot, right? Getting, getting skin in the game because, you know, if there's one guarantee in life, if you do nothing, nothing's going to happen, right? Yes. Or, or, or bad things will happen because you're just going to let whatever happened happen to you versus happen for you. So, I mean, I, I could go on and on with, with, with the whole typical motivational talk here, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I see common traits among successful people. I've been around extremely successful people. And while there is definitely luck involved with a lot of things, the people who I find to be successful, they go out and they track down and put themselves in the opportunity to find good fortune, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, they put themselves in the game and some people fail big yeah. time and they end up being nobodies and you never hear about them. But then there are some people who fail, but then go, yeah, I'll come back for more. They fail again. They come back for more and they just yep. keep going until you can't help but go, well, geez, like they've been around for two decades now and they made it right because yeah. they just kept going. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say that like, as far as the people I work with, um, you know, if, if there's that big, the two big traits would just be self-belief, right? And the willingness to be humble, to do the work. I mean, those two are two big things that I think determine success. Totally. And so, so we got to loop back a little bit because a lot of what you're talking about is basically that concept of discipline equals freedom, like what Jocko Willick says, mm -hmm. where for you yourself, you're saying you have these rules, these, these set of things that you do every day and your clients who initiate that discipline and realize that by doing, they get the freedom. And I think that's like such a hard concept for a lot of people to understand is that when you have like every morning I wake up, I meditate, I do this, blah, blah, blah. You like then do have the freedom because your mind isn't like, what happens next? What happens next? You're like, oh, if I just do this, I get a result. That's mm -hmm. how it works. But you went in a skin in the game. Have you read Skin in the Game by uh, Asim I've, I've, I've browsed through it, yeah. That book. So I'm like, one, I'm too, I read too much. 100%. I know I do. <laughs> but I'm re-listening to that book. I, I got it like a month ago. And then I do, if I audio book something, I listen to it at 2x speed. I make sure to go back through it if it's good enough. That book is phenomenal. But his whole mentality is like, why trust anyone or move towards anything where you don't have skin in the game or the person doesn't have skin in the game. Right. Because then that's where, that's how the system currently politically medical is broken because these people don't have skin in the game. They don't get penalized. If something bad, look at the bankers, mm. the economy crashed and they get a payout. So they don't have like any skin in the game to actually make sure that things are going well because they get money regardless of what happens. Yep. It's an interesting phenomenon. No, it's just like, um, and I harp on this all the time, especially when people reach out to me who are other coaches who are trying to, you know, find success uh, with, with helping people with their fitness and health goals. Uh, and they ask me, you know, like, how, how did you become successful? Um, and, you know, successful is a weird word. It means so many different things, yeah. right? Like, um, I could be making 20 grand a year and I'd be successful, right? Like, who, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't mean, it means totally different things to different people. But, um, I guess what, what people are asking, right, is how do I make more money online or how do I have a business online that's sustainable that I can sleep at night, right? Mm -hmm. And how do I get more people to um, trust me uh, and to actually use me, right? Uh, and I'll tell them first and foremost, like, um, yes, you want to give as much as possible, right? You want to give to the universe without any kind of expectation in return. Yes. But when people seek you out, right, and they ask for your help, if all you're doing is giving, and I'll say free information, right? Um, if that's what people expect and that's all they want, yeah. um, there's a clear divide between people who invest in themselves, even investing in poor things. Like I would raise my hand and say, I've wasted probably more money on poor coaching than I have invested in great coaching. But what the poor coaching did for me was it taught me so much about what to look for, right? And it forced me out of my comfort zone. It forced me to feel like if I don't do something here, I'm going to lose this investment of both finances and time. And uh, so I tell people all the time who are aspiring coaches, look, charge a fee that is worth it's like worth its weight, right? Worth yeah. what you're going to give this person. Because I'll tell you right now, I can line up all the people who have ever contacted me. And there's a very 
clear divide between those who have invested in co coaching with me and those who just want a free handout mm -hmm. because there's no value there. No. Like I, by charging someone or investing and putting skin in the game, right? Because let's face it, that's what it is. It's paying to play. Yep. Um, it's taking your time and your, you know, that you've worked to make money or whatever and you invest it into yourself to make a change. If there's nothing to lose, the chances are you're, you're not going to do it, right? You're not going to go and follow a plan that someone gives you. I've given, man, when I first started out, I gave away hundreds of free workout plans. Yeah. How many good transformations did I get? None. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it wasn't until I started charging people and said, hey, even if it was 50 bucks, like you got to pay for this. And you know, the people who would be like, ooh, what? I'm not paying for that. That's crazy. Yeah. I have the money or whatever. They never get results. But then the people who go, well, you know, yeah, okay, I'll pay for it. Boom. What do you know? All of a sudden, totally. what happens? Yeah. They start going, well, I better do that because I paid for I have skin in the game. Yeah. Same is true with anything in your life. Like, totally true. People wonder, like, <laughs> it's funny. I have a lot of people who go, well, marriage is pointless, right? All you're doing is <laughs> signing a contract, right? And potentially yeah. losing it all if it goes wrong because most marriages end up in divorce, more than half, right? Yeah. But I tell people all the time you know, part of our human nature is to want lifelong companionship with somebody who is truly your, your best friend, your rock, your, your yes. partner in crime, whatever. But let's imagine for a second, if we didn't have marriage and how easy it would be sometimes to just be like, I'm out. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> and walk away. Cause there's moments where you feel that way. Right. Yeah. But it, there's skin in the game. Now, both people have skin in the game. Sure. The guy might have more right in some instances, but, um, still I, I believe that there's reasons for it. Um, and without skin in the game, you never tend to find your ultimate potential, right? You never tend to actually reach these heights that you didn't even know you could reach before. Yeah, man, that's a lot. Yes. Number one is people like understand that you like paying for coaching, whatever it may be, will get you better results because you will get you better results. That's like the honest truth. And yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot too, because I think about the, the notion of like raising or reducing prices based on how much someone makes mm. simply because if you're like, Hey, this much. And they're like, yep, of course, because that's nothing to me. <laughs> then you're like, it's not even from your perspective. Like, mm. Oh, I want more money. It's like these people literally aren't going to care because just like when they bought that workout plan online and didn't follow it last week, sure. they're not going to do it this month. I mean, we see that yeah. all the time. Oh yeah. I mean, there's definitely something to be said for, uh, you know, uh, I guess earning potential or earning level, uh, versus, um, you know, even just setting your prices to a certain level to attract a certain earning level. Right. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I think you're totally right. Um, there are people who have invested in my programs at one point, thousands of dollars and it's like, you know, pulling teeth to get them to do anything. Right. Yes. And coach them and all this stuff because the money to them isn't a big deal. Uh, I still have clients like that who, who pay me every month. Hopefully they're not listening, but if they are, no, if they are like, you know, yeah. they pay me lots of money and it's like it, to them, there's no, there, you'd have to charge an astronomical amount of money yes. to get them to actually listen, but they, they haven't placed a value that high on their health, on their fitness. And so even though the amount they're paying you is a lot um, yeah. to them, it's not. And so you're right, like scaling that, it would be tough to do, but if you had a good idea of what they made and, and you could talk to them, you know, mm -hmm. openly and say, Hey, like, I, I think you should pay this so that you actually do something. Yeah. Then, yeah I think that would help. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, definitely. Because some people think too, like, well, I'll get a coach and then it's done. And you're like, mm -hmm. no, you still have sure. to put in the work. Like it's not, Oh like, yeah. I just I had this I just happened to me yesterday. Um, I still happens to me and I, I try to do a great job of qualifying people. Uh, but I had someone, somehow find a link to sign up to my program. They signed up. I had no idea who they were. Um, so I reached out and just said, Hey, you know, um, not sure who you are, but glad you're here. More than happy to help. And uh, didn't hear anything back from them. Um, and I'm like, well, you just paid money. So that's weird. But then, um, a couple of days later they asked me, why is, you know, do I have to be on Facebook to get coached? I said, no, like I'm literally yeah. emailing you right now. Like you don't <laughs> have to be on Facebook. There are resources there for you if you want to join things, but this is me emailing you like I'm a real person and uh, no response. Right. And I'm like, that's weird. And then two days later I saw they canceled. So they, they never talked to me about anything. They just signed up, they canceled and they reached out to me and said, I want a refund. <laughs> what and I said, well, hold on a second. Like, that's fine. But why did you even sign up? Like, I want to know, like, why? yeah, 
And they said, well, because I wanted to lose weight and blah, blah, blah. I go, well, okay, what? I'm so confused. <laughs> but it, once again, you're right. They signed up thinking that the instant I hit okay and, and yeah. saved my money, then all of a sudden everything's going to handle itself. Like all yeah. of a sudden just I going to appear in my house and start cooking me food and like he's going to start training me and all of a sudden like, and I'm like, wait, you didn't even respond to my emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, stuff like that still happens, which is crazy, but it, it does. So, okay. So I got to ask, what are the tattoo, the meanings of the tattoos? Oh man. Uh, by the way, I, just, I remember that word that I was going to tell you earlier. It's entitled. Yes. Entitled. entitled. Entitlement. I think That's, people have a natural entitlement these days. I right? think most people have a natural entitlement. It's yeah. different if it's fueled by doing something. That's like, everybody's like, I hate them. They're not humble. It's like, well, like that dude did yeah. the most amazing shit in the world. <laughs> off to try to get there. Yeah. Yeah. But on the other hand, most of us are, they do have that crazy entitlement. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know if it's a conscious, like it's not always a conscious level of entitlement, mm-hmm. but like because of society, especially Western culture, you know, we think everything should just be like, you know, a la carte, like, Oh yeah. yeah. Or, or everything should just be uh, a la carte. Not the right word. Everything should just be comped. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, Oh, I should just get this for free and I should just be handed the results because I'm a person. Yeah. So well, like, no. Similarly. And I know you talk about this a bit with the government. A lot of times now we're getting trained for that too. I remember as a kid, I was like, I, I always love Bigfoot, the locked in sponsor, like all that shit. Nice. And I was like, why don't they just go in a second? But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was like, why don't they just go to Lake Ness with the whole military and go find this Loch Ness monster? I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. They could do it in a minute. Like, we could know. Right. Because I thought the government would just, like, do everything. And now I realize, no, they shouldn't do most things at all. (laughs) I lived in Scotland for three years, um, and we got to go see the actual original Loch Ness. Really? That's Yeah. So it was pretty cool. They actually had a – I have a picture – uh, I think, I'm not sure exactly where it was, but they actually have like a fake Loch Ness that comes out of the water or something like really? that. And it's like a little, it's like a, if you were in Vegas, you know, you'd see the yeah. Bellagio fountain or whatever go up and like every so often the thing pops its head up and it's like, everybody takes a picture. Uh, but yeah, so I have, I was a kid, but I have pictures there. <laughs> I feel like that's a way to go out. You just swim Loch Ness every morning and just see if it gets you. Like, I don't yeah, know if he's yeah, on his morning can... swim. Yeah. One of these days it's going to get me. Yeah. That's funny. We okay. find out it's really like a real, it's yeah. like an alligator or some shit. And it's not a fun death. <laughs> no, it's an intelligent life form that keeps you locked yeah. down <laughs> below, but it has air. It's been Only collecting eternity. air. That's so funny. That's um, nice. So tattoos. No, I, uh, I have my, um, well, I don't know if, I guess you might feel if you record the video, you'll see. Yeah. I have my two, my two boys here. Um, oh, awesome. On my arm. Um, and then I have my wife on my arm too, which you can't really see. I'm trying. To oh see. yeah. 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 And then I have, uh, the word for given here. It's cause I'm a, I'm a Christian, but, um, I have that. And then I have, um, guardian angel wings coming from my wife. Like she's uh, holding a sword and guarding my kids. That's awesome. And then I have their birth dates. Um, I have roses cause roses is as a sign for love for your family. So it's kind of like surrounding them. Um, and then I have uh, a lion here because uh, I'm named after the, a king. Oh, Just heck yeah. Symbolize that. And then on my back, I have a crown and I have, I have more. <laughs> yeah. I have, this is a dedication of my uncle who committed suicide actually oh, about man. six years ago. Um, and then what else do I have? Oh, I have uh, on, my, on my ribs, I have uh, in Japanese, I have love for my brother in Japanese. Uh, it's a tattoo. My brother and I have the same. Uh, matching tattoo or whatever that is awesome man yeah. that's so, so that's I'm it. assuming this was evolution over a long period of time oh yeah yeah it took um hmm, hours <laughs> days probably if you add yeah. up all the hours i would say a few days minimum um probably like 72 hours with a tattoo maybe not that long but yeah, yeah close close though because there were times where i would do you know if you have you ever do you have any tattoos yeah, I have two, and they're okay. so small. Like this one, like I'm gonna be completely honest. Both I got drunk. <laughs> both took. I've never done a drunk test. Probably tattoo. twenty. Okay, so one, you wake up with it, so you don't have you don't. Oh have shit! Pain, so it's good. <laughs> but two, like I knew what I wanted already, so it wasn't like oh. Yeah. Just, but it was like oh, it's tattoo place. It's one a.m. Let's just go get it. <laughs> 
And so, like, I didn't have to make a judgment anymore. But they took, That's like, awesome. 20, 30 minutes each. Oh, quick, so yeah. Just like, doop, doop, doop. And he's like, yeah. you're good. And I'm like, oh, okay. Here's the- <laughs> Bye. That's funny, man. Yeah, no, I've, um, I've sat for, I think the longest I ever sat was, hmm, I'm trying to think. Because the one I got from my uncle actually took a long time. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why, because um, it's not the biggest one I have, but it took a long time. Um, so I think that one was like six to eight hours. Um, and I've sat before, I mean, like multiple sessions, right? Like just to do the lion itself was like four sessions of like four or five hours. So wow. like, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they take their time because like, you, you know, pay by hour. more or whatever, yeah. but usually what we would do is... Uh, ahead of time like these artists that i've worked with um you know they we agree on like a project time frame and yeah. like per hour fee or whatever and we just go from there but yeah it's i i would love to get more it's just i don't know if i ever will to be honest but yeah. we'll see yeah it's like that one it's one of those bugs everybody's like i get it i got addicted to getting tattoos oh it's definitely addicting <laughs> yeah it is so okay so I wanted to go in a little bit of true transformation. Um, and I know you have a new summer program that you've been talking a lot about. How is that going? What does that entail? What's been going on with that, man? So true transformation primarily offers um, one-on-one coaching, right? Mm-hmm. So we do uh, high level um, four to six month programs to help people really get a hold of their health and fitness and not do any kind of cookie cutter, you yeah. know, fast you know, easy type of stuff. It's, it's more of like, let's, let's start from the ground up and let's build something that you can use forever. Yeah. Um, that's why we call it true transformation because really we're focused on what happens after you lose the weight. Exactly. Um, because it's so easy to, well, not easy, but like biggest loser mentality where you just go, 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 starve, 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 you know, cut out everything, live the Spartan life for three weeks or four months or whatever, you know, people yeah. do. And uh, as soon as it's done, go back to what I did before because yeah. there's no way in hell you can maintain that. So we, totally. we, we sacrifice short-term results um, with a lifetime mentality. Uh, and, you know, we, from time to time, of course, I love making fitness fun. Um, so during times of the year where people are liable to go, eh, I can wait or eh, I don't need to do this right now. It's too much going on. I totally get it. So my idea is like, let's just do what you can make it fun. And so that's kind of where we, we do things like a summer fat loss challenge where, um, once again, everything we do is sustainable, but we have one now that we are, we're calling the Moscow mule summer challenge where a lot of people drink in the summer. A lot of people eat barbecues, parties, yeah. whatever. I mean, parents, you know, we do different stuff. We go and drink our, <laughs> our, t- our tired woes away. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's something to where uh, a program designed to give you the freedom to enjoy that stuff and still get some really good results in the summer where you have a lot going on. So we do, this program is based around just a few workouts a week, being able to drink twice a week, uh, be able to eat, you know, a bad meal at least twice a week, uh, and then still figure out how to get in shape. So it's pretty fun, man, but yeah, it's going great. I mean, everything is going great. That is awesome. Yeah. And again, once again, it's the discipline equals freedom. You're allowing, you're helping to give them the guidelines. Here's what you do. Here's literally how you take control of your life forever. Yeah. But you have the freedom to go have some Moscow mules to go. And I know when you guys started that podcast, I was like, oh my God, it's reinforcing Carter's addiction to Moscow mules. <laughs> you mean my addiction? <laughs> it's, you have the same addiction? You guys, uh, I, I know you well, Yeah. I think I get more messages about moscow mules than i do fitness <laughs> i'm literally i get tagged in a moscow mule picture at least every other day see i want to start at tequila mules i don't know what that oh, mexican, yes. mexican mule, mule. It's a mexican, mexican mule. mule man i'm a tequila guy it's like nice. the only thing i drink well it's funny our our program we have this pretty big pdf it's like 40 50 pages whatever but um every few pages we have like a recipe for a moscow mule and one of them's the mexican mule for sure yes. a, i've had that one it's pretty good i i still am old like old school I'm very like original moscow mule based. oh yeah actually funny enough do you know those like icy drinks those like water flavored ice yeah like uh, ice, whatever ice drinks there are no calories um, but they're a bunch of artificial truly's stuff. truly's is that what they are i don't it's i don't not- even know my sister drinks a lot of them. My dad's always like, what do you got over there? Truly? <laughs> so that's the only reason that I know that. Well, they, they sell them at my, like around here in Northern Virginia, they sell them um, everywhere. So like I, they never have new flavors ever. 
And I told Carter like a year ago or not, maybe not a year ago, but we, we met about a year ago. Yeah. I told him that like Moscow mules are the next big thing. I promise you, like, I promise you, I, I was like, everywhere you look, they're going to be doing something related. Yeah. Moscow mules. Well, this company that's this flavored water or whatever, they just came out. Oh, with, they're just water. Just water. Oh, I was talking yeah. about the alcohol spiked water. Oh, no, 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 no. These are just water. They're just. And you're right. Water. I think it's icy. I think it's icy or ice or whatever it's called. Yeah. But yeah. So they just came out with a new flavor and it's um, ginger lemon. Oh, no, ginger lime. Ginger yeah. lime. And I'm thinking, duh, I know what they're doing. Yeah. Like, well, people are going to buy these now and dump them in with vodka or whatever yeah. and make a Moscow mule that's like, you know, minimal calories. Yeah. I'll be right doing that right there. <laughs> <laughs> I see some people nowadays making the craziest. They just, they're like, how can I make the lowest calorie drink that tastes? <laughs> It doesn't even have to taste good. It's just low calories and there's a mixer. I'll see the nastiest stuff sometimes. I'm like, can you just, you know, just have it's like so a regular simple, drink? Like, yeah. Dump some clear liquor, vodka, tequila with yeah. a mixer that is yeah, good. anything. <laughs> Ginger Spot beer or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Whatever it is. I mean, seriously, it's just, it's, it's that mentality of like, let's try to be oh, as fancy as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to diet down as lean as possible. So I have to make my drinks super yeah. horrible. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's still alcohol. It's still going to, you know, do exactly. the same thing in your body. It's just a little less calories for some person. Exactly. Else. So I got to ask, I have a, a concept that I bring up a lot called higher leverage skills. And essentially higher leverage skill is uh, a skill that you can learn in any subject, any terrain, but you can apply it over and over again in your life. So mm. learning to breathe better is a higher leverage skill because when you breathe better, basically meditation's better, sex can be better, mm. uh, movement can be better. Learning to learn is a higher leverage skill because then you can learn everything easier because you know how to learn. Sure. Um, are there any skills or mindsets? It could be a mindset as well, like uh, pattern recognition or something like that, that have really helped you get to where you are now. Um, any higher leverage skills? That's a really good question. Yeah. I mean, I always relate everything back to fitness, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's a great skill to learn how to track things um, yes. so that at least you develop the uh, awareness and knowledge of what's going in, what's going out, right? Um, I think this applies to a lot of things in your life. Uh, I, I don't even think it's a bad idea to track relationship things like how often you mm -hmm. go on dates um, or how often you're spending time with your kids. Um, I find that the more I am numbers driven, the more, or at least aware of, of numbers, yeah. the more success I see in the areas uh, that I care about in my life. Um, and so I think that's one thing. I also think uh, being consistent is such a big deal. Uh, and I don't mean consistently like doing the perfect stuff, but just yeah. doing the small habits consistently, like small investments over time. I mean, like, for example, I use this, uh, I use this app on my phone. I think it's called Quapital or something. I don't know what yeah. it, I think it's Quapital. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Funny when you say shit out loud after you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's this like automated savings thing. So anytime oh. I see or want something that isn't necessarily like a necessity, so right now I want this. I'll, I'll give you an example. I want the boxing um, Bob set up, right? It's oh, like, dude, we yeah. had one. Me, yeah. Trent, uh, who you met recently, yeah. and then Tim. We had one that literally, one, put it oh. near, no, no, put it near a corner because it's hilarious because people yeah. walk around and be like, what the? Because it feels <laughs> like a real person. Yes. But like your kids are going to have a heyday with that thing. Yes. So they'll just run out and be like, ah! Yeah. So I want one right now. I was going to get one like really soon, but I had the my surgery, so I can't box for a little while. Okay. Um, so I was like, I want one. So I, I never even priced them out. I was just like, I don't even know what they cost. They're probably a hundred bucks or something. I don't know, but they're like not cheap, right? They're like, yeah. I, I say not cheap, but they're through like 300 bucks or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not something I just go, okay, whatever, buy it. Um, I don't need it. I have a plenty of boxing stuff at my gym, but I was like, I want one. <laughs> so, um, I have this app where I just type in what I want, how mm -hmm. much it costs. And then every time I spend money out of my checking account, it takes like a dollar and it applies. Awesome. To it, right. So you don't even notice that the money's gone. So the other day I was looking at like all the things that I've set up to save for. And I was like, holy shit, man, I am like 
almost there with everything, right? Yeah. Um, which is crazy because you don't even realize it. But that's like fitness, right? Where doing little things like going for a walk every day or, um, you know, sleeping eight hours a night or prepping your food every Wednesday. You think it's like, oh, it's so mundane. And it's like, why? And like, but dude, you realize over eight months or a year or whatever, you start to see a whole new person come before you. And you're like, wow, I look in the mirror. I don't even recognize myself yeah. because it's all those things. Like that's the crazy shit. So I think to answer your question, learning how to be consistent mm -hmm. um, is so, so important. Um, consistently good. <laughs> Not consistent. Yeah. It's very easy to be consistently bad. No, I think consistency is one of the most, be the, the air. And this is the mindset that most people go in with, with most anything. Mm -hmm. is that especially when they hear consistency is the key they go okay cool so like i'm gonna see results real quick i'll just do it like every day for a week or two and then i'll right. see it. it's like consistency is stealthy like it's just like one day you're like oh my god this mm -hmm. makes no sense it's just like how'd you do it and especially like if you ask anybody like napoleon hill was good with breaking down like habits and stuff like that of, of mm -hmm. the best people in the world and how they did things the main thing is they always thought positively and they always tried to go towards what they were doing, like what they wanted to achieve. Yep. So if you break it down, you're like, boom, 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 boom. Then it just adds up. I think another skill too, that applies to everything in your life is grit. Yes. Um, grit. And I define grit as just that willingness to never quit um, and to just buckle down and do it, whether you feel like it or not. I'm not saying I'm perfect with that, but I think that there's something to be said for having many opportunities to quit mm -hmm. something and not giving into that temptation, right? That temptation to just say, fuck it. Um, but just yeah. go, you know what? I'm just going to come back. Even if it just means pausing instead of quitting, pausing and going, all right, I'll give it a day and then I'm getting right back to it. Right. Um, I think that's such an important skill to develop because there, you know, there's somebody, I can't remember who it was. One of my friends I saw on Facebook said, you know, if you're going through a rough time and you're trying to accomplish something really big, um, whether it's you know, losing 100 pounds or losing 50 pounds or even just starting a business that is profitable, yeah. um, if you feel like, man, this really sucks, good, like because it does. And that's yeah. why only so few people do it, right? Otherwise, duh, everybody would do it. It's so common sense, right? Yeah. But like that grit, that determination to push through changes you, right? It changes yeah. your results. It keeps you, keeps you, uh, on the path to be successful. I love that. The idea of pausing and not quitting. Mm. You didn't stop. You paused. I love Yeah, that is awesome. So the, the next thing is something that I always ask as well is, are you currently questioning anything? So this can be life, politics, religion, whatever it may be. But I like the most outlandish, like one of the, the mindsets that I try to always have is to question everything because mm -hmm nothing especially when you're told by someone and they refer to they as the source or anything along those lines is as people normally say it is until you go and you actually get that information so is there anything right now that you're like i just don't think it works that way everything i mean to be honest with you there's there's never a time where you know well sure there are times where i don't question things but there's never been a time where i'm not questioning something yeah um, there are even times where i question whether i'm in the right you know platform um yeah. Because, you know, you might go through a few weeks of dealing with just obnoxious people, right? Yep. And people who don't respect you or whatever. And you're like, why, you know, why is this happening? So one thing I've tried to do, and, and this is, you know, if I'm questioning something about results, right, that I'm not getting, um, you know, the big area that, I would, that I've started to really hone in on, that I've done before, but just things that I've tried to fine tune a little bit is, is making sure that what I'm putting out into the universe is, is worth getting something back, right? Yeah. Not, not the expectation to get something back, but just making sure that I'm doing, like taking ownership, extreme ownership, right? And saying yes. like, what can I do better, right? If I'm dealing with a lot of people who just aren't respecting my time, aren't respecting my business um, and taking advantage of me, like why is that happening? And, and always pointing the finger at me first, what can I do better? Yeah. But questioning like, um, you know, with my kids, questioning, uh, you know, the, the way we raise kids, um, you know, and, and thinking about like all the access they have to, like you mentioned YouTube and, yeah. and just like college and what that's going to look like. And is that really what I want to do for them or how I want, how I want to set them up. Right. Questioning myself, right. Like, am I being the best father, you know, like yeah. 
there's so many, like I'm all, dude, I'm probably one of the biggest questioners. <laughs> I, one thing. Okay. So if you really want the honest truth, well, yeah. I'm giving the honest truth, but if you want one thing that I've really questioned recently is, is death. Yes. Um, I, I believe in God and all that. Right. But you know, there's just because you believe in something, uh, doesn't make it, doesn't make you accurate about mm-hmm. like how it's really going to be. Right. Because if you've never seen, uh, or experienced it, there's no way of knowing. Um, no way. it's such a crazy concept that there's nobody when it comes to death, there's nobody who knows. Yes. Literally. Yeah. Except if you believe in God, then God knows, but, or the people who are dead know, but there's no, like, <laughs> it'll freak you out. Right. Like if you yeah. start to really, I've laid in bed and I start to question like, what's going to happen when I die? right? Like what happens to my brain? Cause the concept of it, your brain turning off and you not existing anymore. Yeah. just doesn't like, to me, it doesn't make sense because of like how complex we are. Right. And our soul and all that. But I'm like, what really happens? Like, yeah. You know, do I just cease to exist? And I don't even know I don't exist anymore. Right. Like that's so scary. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, oh it man. So uncomfortable. Like it yeah. really does. So I've started to really question, not my beliefs, but question, um, just like, actually questioning um, if I'm setting up my, my family or my kids, especially to yeah. be in a place to where they can be successful after I'm gone. Cause that they could come anytime. Now yeah. I don't believe that, you know, like, I, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things where you start to really, really dig deep and you go, wow, I could go down a rabbit hole right now. <laughs> Thank God I'm not like high or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So foul. Um, but you just think about it and you're like, Oh my God, when you start to really get into it, even like yeah. the universe, right? Like I've questioned the universe because we're so small, dude. Like so when, small. when you find out how small you are, I'm like, why am I even doing anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I even doing a podcast, dude? I yeah. just go live on a beach somewhere. And I always see why people go crazy and they go, well, go crazy. Maybe they're not going crazy. Maybe they're smart. But yeah. like you go and just live on a beach and don't care about money. You just work some meaningless job. Yeah. Chill. Like, cause like, I know you're just floating in a sea. Like you are, if you look at sand on a beach, you are just a particle of sand, dude. That's yeah, it. I know. Like, holy crap. But anyway, man, so no, yeah. Thing right now. That's like my big man. Yeah. When I was a kid, if I ever had anxiety, I would literally in my mind, I, I had this, I don't know where I came up with this. Mm. I would zoom out and I would keep zooming out until we could, <laughs> like literally like Milky way. And then I'm like, Oh, nothing matters. And I would fall asleep. <laughs> like if I had anxiety, See, that's where that, that'll give me anxiety. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm like, oh my God, this can't like, be real. Seriously. But the questioning death, man, that's, um, yeah, I had a friend die last year, right around, uh, probably around last year, like car accident, no one saw it coming. And it was like someone I grew up with. So I've had the, a very similar um, journey of understanding and trying to like, just like figure out for myself how I take it. And it's, definitely an evolution of thought and if no one go like until someone goes through it they really can't start to think about it's just like when people talk about dmt ayahuasca lsd psilocybin it's like if you haven't done it then it's very hard to talk about someone's experiences with it mm, yeah but dispensa and all these other uh, meditation people a lot of neuroscientists talk about how like we she humans created like we've never scientifically validated that the soul or who you are is created from the brain but we say that all the time we're always like oh no it's just the brain creating the idea of you and it's like but show me that because we don't even know where anything is in the brain we still yeah it's just the fact that we're also well you know people can argue that we're not that unique but i still believe we are like fingerprints right like everybody's got a completely different fingerprint yeah i mean that to me like crazy stuff like that no one's got my exact genetics right um and i don't know i I feel like there's something to be said too for this whole like notion of um emotion and love and like Mm -hmm. sin and like all these things that come from uh, a moral uh code right that somehow we're given I don't know how, right? Like, yeah. I mean, my kids naturally know not to kill each other, right? Yeah. Sure, they might hit each other, but my son's not, you know, oh, my, you know, my younger brother stole my toy, so I'm just going to kill him, right? Like, yeah. he might say, I want to kill you, you know, but he's not literally, because I mean, could you imagine, like, if we were just born, like, oh my God. savages, right? Like, 
you know, <laughs> I yeah. mean, there would be no like, but, and, and so I, I, I'm with you, like, there's no scientific proof to say that the soul and, and our personality and all these things yeah. were, were self-generated. Um, that would be crazy. But my kids, I tell my wife all the time, my son, my oldest was born with a personality from day one. Yeah. It never changed. It's who he is. That is um, awesome. And it's crazy though, because he wasn't like, I know I wasn't aware when I was one day old. I mean, my son threw the worst tantrums as a one-year-old or a one-day-year-old <laughs> as he does as a four-year-old now. That's funny. Same type of deal, yeah. right? So it's like, there's obviously, I do believe in nature nurture, but as far as like death and dying and all that, nobody, nobody really knows. I mean, no, if they did, we would all be like, yeah, cool. We're yeah. all going to, I mean, we'd probably be a lot of people killing themselves. If yeah. It was, it was a great thing, right? I saw a movie about that on Netflix. They had like, they discover that there's an afterlife and it's yeah. like a uh, suicide rate and like there's tickers everywhere. It's yeah. like 4 million people kill themselves that day. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, whole, like, but they didn't even know. It's just like someone showed that like energy goes somewhere. Like they could trace the energy mm-hmm. after a person died. And like all these people are just like, cool, game that's over. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Sad. But I mean, it's, it's the world we live in for sure, man. I could see that happening. Yeah. Sure. But so a book that um, I don't know if you've read it. It's called Solve for Happy. Mm-hmm. Um, Mo Guada. Godot, something like that. He was uh, one of the algorithm uh, creators of Google mm. and like his son dies um, and he has to kind of, because he's coming at it from this scientific engineering point of mindset, he's creating the algorithm, his own algorithm for happiness. Mm. He's finding these, these holes in our perception of what we think time is in reality, in uh, meaning, all these things. I think you'd really enjoy it. And in the yeah, end, I have to check that out. In the end, he goes into um, like the the odds of humans being here out of all galaxies, and he's calculating all these things. He's talking about evolution. He's like throwing the most outrageous <laughs> equations, and you're just like, I believe him. I'm not going to check this. I believe him. Sure, why not? <laughs> right? It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It, which is the synthesis of the book. It's like, yeah, choose. I'll read that. I'll read that. That's a good that, one. It's a great one. So is there anything you've been obsessed with lately besides getting a new Bob? Besides, you know. Obsessed. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I guess. Hmm. Not really obsessed, but I think focused on. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm always like, I guess I kind of live in like a healthy level of obsession for certain things. Um, I think for me, it's, it's been just obsessed with trying to better myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't mean like that in like a, like a typical way. I just mean like maybe just better ways that I talk to myself. Right. Or better things that I put out energy wise. Um, but obsessed, like I'm, I'm obsessed with trying to slow down a little bit. Um, because with my kids, for example, you know, so my firstborn was, uh, incredibly like if you ever listens to this, he was very difficult, still is difficult in a way that really challenges you to be a patient parent. Right. Um, but my second one is like an angel. So I have this, this, this conflicting energy of, I want my oldest to become more mature and like yeah. a little faster, right? Speed up a little faster. Cause he's just that, he got that energy yeah. where he is what it is. I love him to death. He's my best friend, but he's just like got that energy. So then my youngest is like this. You never want them to grow up, right? Like, please don't ever change. Live how you are now for the rest of your life. Cause you're the cutest, <laughs> nicest kid. Watch, he'll grow up and be like some a-hole. Like, but anyway, so like I live in this conflicting environment. So it's like, how do I, you know, how do, I'm obsessed with providing, but also mm-hmm. making sure I don't miss things. Right. Um, so just being a better parent is something I'm obsessed with because I never had like the blueprint for being a good parent. So I'm trying to figure that out. I'm also obsessed with the process of writing a couple books that I have. It's so much more challenging than I thought, right? Um, yeah. Consider myself to be above average writer, not an amazing writer, but above average. Um, and sitting down and writing every day, man, it's so hard. Like I, I'm literally going to start a challenge soon for anybody who's writing yeah. a book and be like, you know, 2000 words a day. And it's like, you start cranking it out and it's just, the words don't come out <laughs> as yeah. much as you thought they would. So I'm obsessed with that process. I have so much respect 
for like Stephen King and like, oh, oh man, what, what a fucking genius, right? Like, oh my gosh. Um, and just the amount of good writing he's done or like, I mean, there's so many authors. He's just my favorite. But yeah. like, so much respect. Like when you actually try to do something um, that you thought, like you kind of took for granted before, like books, right? You try to write your own. You realize, oh my gosh. Because I'm, I'm trying to write a good book, not just yeah. write, you know, like I'm trying to write a good book. <laughs> and it's just like, damn. So I'm obsessed with that for sure. That's awesome. Do you have any rituals or habits when you go into the writing mode? Rituals or habits? I mean, yeah, I, I, the, the biggest ritual for me is just um, doing it at the same time every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but I need to lock that in more. I mean, anytime I have something that I want to get done, the best thing to do for me is to get to bed at a good time, right? Yeah. And wake up early and get it done first thing in the morning. If that doesn't happen, then the chances of it getting done become slimmer as the day goes on. Totally. So, you know, I've, I'm starting to play around with now that I, I kind of treat myself as an, as an experiment. You know, I used to be big on working out first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to switch my thinking a little bit. Um, not to say activity first thing in the morning isn't, isn't bad. I think that's great. Yeah. But actually, focused training session, I think, would be better done midday um, and getting more work related things yeah. done early on uh, because you still have the energy to work out. You may not have the mental clarity to get high level thinking and work done midday. Um, so I've been doing the opposite for a long time, trying to do my book midday and it just hasn't been great. Yeah. So trying to maybe switch that around a little bit, you know, there's um. so I was talking to Brad Pilon about writing mm. and he gave me, I, and I've never thought of this. He said, don't read anything else or listen to anybody talk before you start to write Ooh. because you'll start to incorporate their voice in your yeah. head and use that in your book and That's write. Funny. Like and That's I was funny. like, oh my God. And I'm a big reader, but I read a lot of fiction. So my writing tends to be, um, and I watch a lot of, well, like TV books. Um, yeah. for me, I, I'm not a big, like, um, I used, I went through a phase where I was reading like all the business books and stuff like that. But I honestly, now to get excited to read, it has to be fiction or it has to be like something, a new take. Like I just read uh, Aubrey Marcus's book, yeah, um, which I found to be really cool because I've read a lot of like, you know, habit books and how to start your day books and all that stuff. His was like a totally different take because he's kind of yeah. out there. He's not afraid to talk about like his drug usage and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I felt that was cool. I'm also big into like uh, biographies. So I yeah. read um, Scar Tissue, which was uh, Andy, oh he, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, whatever Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, lead singer. His his biography was fucking crazy, man. Really? Yeah, so that was good. That was really good. I um, want to read that. Yeah, one of the best for sure. I mean, those guys, man, they were crazy lives. But yeah, so like, but like to your point, I think that's smart because even if I read fiction, then sometimes my writing becomes too like yeah. silly. <laughs> yeah. But just kind of like figuring out like I, so here's a tip for anybody listening who has kids who's trying to write a book. Um, this is going to sound crazy, but I've, my approach with both with all my books now is if my kids were old enough to read, but still mm-hmm. young enough to not like fully understand everything, how would I write to them? Mm-hmm. Because that's the level that you actually need to write to really just be able to relate to everybody. Yeah. Um, not at a silly grade level, but like, a simple yet funny, entertaining level to keep them interested. Like that's the way I write now. Even if you read my Instagram captions, I tend to try to go that direction. I got to do better with it. But like if I was talking to my son and I was like, what would I tell him about eating or counting macros or something? Then I try to tell him a funny story and then I try to get into the macros and then like break it down in a simple way to understand it and try to leave him with something that will remember. He'll help him remember the concept, right? So that's the way I write. That is awesome. Dude, I love that. I love that. Right, like, to 9th, 10th, 11th grader trying to figure out their own life. Yeah, I mean, like, anything I write now, anything I do, like, this is my secret for me. It works for me. But um, now that I have kids, and obviously it wasn't this way before I had kids, but writing to my my boys, um, everything is written to them. So, like, if you read something, know that in my head, my audience, even though, yeah. yes, that all the gurus will say, write to your, like, ideal audience, your ideal audience is going to be attracted to you, right? They're yeah. going to be attracted to you as a person. So be authentic. Um, and the best way for me to be authentic is talking to my boys, uh, in a way that I would just have a normal conversation, right. Um, and writing that way. And that tends to get more response because people feel like it's authentic versus me trying to like salesy, like, Oh, let yeah. me talk to a 43 year old doctor who is uh, trying to lose <sighs> body fat. Like I get that, but I think 
there's something to be said for even like the guys who have done that. They're doing it in a way that's very authentic. Yeah. Um, you got to, you got to find your voice in today's market. Like you can't learn, you can learn things, but trying to copy what was done 10 years ago, it's a different world now. So yeah. like you have to reinvent the wheel. And I think 10 years from now we'll be talking about like, Hey, just write to your best friend, you know, like yeah. hey, that'll be the way to communicate. No, I would agree hundred percent. I think even like SEO, so you look at SEO, it's mm-hmm. all so overblown that most articles on any Google page are not what you're even looking for. Oh, right. People right. figured out how to game it and they stopped writing good content. Yeah. And so on that same notion, it's like when you create these like fictionalized archetypes and you're like, oh, I know these are the best buyers. So I'm going to write towards the 25 to 45 year old corporate who makes 125000 a year, but still wants to like enjoy life and have a personal trainer. And it's like, it's <laughs> like just, that's the perfect avatar. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get what you're trying to do, but they're going to immediately, you're not going to resonate with them. You're going to turn them off. Yeah. Yeah. People look for it themselves. There are certain brands that I really like. I'm a big fan of of certain brands. One of which is Kino Body. I really like Kino Body, not because, I mean, I don't think he's speaking to me, but it's because um, I like his authenticity, even if you Mm. hate him, right? Or if you hate the brand. Um, I had him on my podcast a long time ago. And, uh, you know, when I talked to him, he was the same way he is like and all this yeah. stuff. And I realized that even though I find some of this stuff to be corny, I, I find that he's just talking like he would to his buddy, right? And that, a brand that can be authentic like that, I mean, there's mm-hmm. numerous brands that do that. I think, sure, there's the mega brands like Apple and stuff. But, you know, Apple though, like they're still authentic. Like they yeah. still do the same, like simple, to the point, you know, hits home. Yep. Um, trying to think what else I've seen. I mean, you, you know, obviously there's plenty of brands, but like, I love when it's just an authentic voice and they're not trying to like necessarily target a certain person. They're just being the brand. They're being themselves. Yeah. And that's naturally attracts the people that are just in that same wavelength. Right. Yeah. It's a true personal brand. Yeah. That's what, not the guy who's like, okay, wait, what is that Lamborghini pulling out? That Lamborghini <laughs> pulling out. He runs up and he's like, ah, picture. And then he runs yeah. away. And then it's like, New well, I want to attract rich people, you know, yeah. like, okay, dude, well, yeah, you should, you should be rich. That's how you attract rich yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you make a little bit more money, then maybe you'll attract some rich people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just be yourself, man. People, you know, I've never gotten a job or gotten hired for anything other than being just me. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's it. I think that's one of the big marketing tips, secrets. Yeah. Back to your point of like, you can't believe that um, we're what we are and who we are is so amazing and we're yeah. all so unique Yeah, and people want to see unique people. Yeah. And the more that you show that you're unique and that everything is unique, the more people will want to follow you anyways. Cause they're like, sure. Oh, it's like a real dude doing stuff. It's not like you just like jumped into the male model section of like men's health. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just be you. I mean, sure. There are other tactics, right. But like, be you like I see guys who are in incredible shape who have horrible business they can't get anything off the ground because they're trying to be somebody else right yeah if they're just themselves they talk about the things they like and they create things that they like other people are gonna like that shit too you just have to be willing to put yourself out there like that and not try to be so and so right I mean for when I started my business I was trying to be I, I know the guys I was trying to be and it never it would never worked and now that I'm just like fuck it if I want to if I like it and I know it's gonna help people and help me I'll put it out there and what do you know, you know, business goes off. Exactly, man. So fuck balance. That is (laughs) this episode. Yeah. If you want to be great at something, you're gonna have to put a lot of time into it. You're gonna have to cut out a lot of stuff. Right. I mean, you know, I, I'm a huge sports fan, the biggest, like I've been in fights over sports. Right. Um, but I, I eliminated a lot of sporting events from my viewership. Right. I like, dude, I just missed the world cup game today. My I'm rooting for Croatia and, Argentina, they played at two o'clock. I just look at the clock and realize I missed the game, but that's because like I yeah. have other priorities. Right. Um, but old me when I was trying to be balanced, right. Would have been like, well, I deserve to watch a two hour soccer game. And sure. If you watch it, nothing wrong with that. Right. I'm not yeah. Yeah. blasting you if, yeah. if you watch it. But what I'm, my point is like to be balanced doesn't necessarily mean you give equal attention to all things. There could be a time, like if my team, I'm from Chicago. So like if any of my Chicago, oh, that's where I am. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Chicago. So, like, um, if I, you know, if the Bulls are in the playoffs or if the Cubs won the World Series, which they did, you know, I ain't, there ain't nothing stopping me from missing that shit, right? 
But at the same token, if it's a regular season game, I probably won't watch it because mm-hmm. I have other things like spending time with my kids. Now, the cool thing is, God willing, if, you know, whatever happens, but if my kids are old enough to enjoy those things with me, then you yeah. can combine them, right? Habit stacking. Like you can do things at the yes. same time. Uh, that's why I always tell people like balance is a myth, but if you're someone who spends a lot of time during doing something like watching a show or watching yeah. TV, you know, you can do two things at once, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> you don't have to sit there and eat, uh, um, Cheetos and watch, you know, uh, exactly. breaking bad for the third time. Um, you can literally do push-ups every commercial break. You can do yeah. squats every commercial break, whatever. There's ways to do both, man. Yes. So anyway, but yeah, that's my, that's my rant, dude. Awesome. So Josiah, where can people find you? Uh, on every social platform, I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere, but at Josiah Fitness on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Boom. Snapchat, YouTube is, uh, if you just search Josiah Novak, uh, I'll come up. Um, awesome. And, uh, we put out content on all platforms every week. So I have a podcast, the Fit Man Project podcast. We're literally getting ready um, to be at our 100th episode. Uh, we're at 94. Hell Yeah right now so yeah in the next week or so we'll be at 100 which is pretty cool um youtube we have almost 100 videos we have facebook uh we have a free facebook group if you search for the true fit group um true transformation army is what we call but yeah you can join that so yeah we're everywhere man just like doing the doing the damn thing so awesome man well thank you so much for being on the podcast thanks for having me man this has been this a really good interview dude i've been on a lot of interviews over the past years this is one of the better ones for sure hell yeah a lot of fun man hell yeah Well, peace, man. Later, brother.